Check one, two. Hello, this is my voice. I'm about to get started in approximately two minutes. Uh, if you could, or if you're in the chat, you could let me know that the volume of my voice is coming through, and if there's any static or any other issues I should be aware of. Uh, thank you very much, and see you in just a minute or two. Hello, <laughs> my buttons aren't working properly. That's usually the first thing I like to say here on uh, <laughs> when I start a coding trade session. Good morning. <laughs> Happy Sunday. <laughs> oh, I was all ready to speak, and then I pressed the button to bring me live, and then I did not show up live, and I got completely flustered. But I realized, actually, now that I look at this, I was just pressing the wrong button. None of this matters. Let's just give this another try. Can we please? OK, going back to here. Putting the music back on. Take two, everybody. <laughs> Hello, good morning, happy Sunday. Welcome to The Coding Train. My name is Dan. I will be your conductor for today's journey. <laughs> and um, this train has been going for a very long time. It was paused, it was stopped in the station for at least a week now. Uh, it, but we're, we're, we're put shoveling the, is, maybe this, is this an electric train? We had solar panels on the roof? I don't know yet. Um, but uh, I'm getting it going again today, and I'm going to be returning to this project that I've been building, which is uh, an autoencoder. Now, if that term autoencoder means nothing to you, don't worry. I will give a brief kind of five minute sort of catch up summary over what I've done in the last couple sessions before, before I dive right into the code. Um, but before I even get to the project that I'm going to be building today, let me just say, hi, are you a new viewer? I see that I have a new member who just joined. This is very exciting. This hasn't necessarily happened in a little while. It's Michael. Uh, Michael, thank you for joining the Coding Train membership program. For your membership, you'll receive uh, thanks from me at this very moment because I'm just speaking and I saw your name and I'm talking about your name. That's probably not why you joined. It shouldn't be why you joined. Uh, access to some member Discord channels for support on your code. We'll send you some stickers in the mail, all of those things. Ah, but before, before uh, I go too far, uh, we must um, dedicate these random numbers that I'm about to read. <laughs> We're just going to start this project over. Everybody? It's been a rough year, it's been a rough two years, it's been a rough 48-ish years <laughs> for me. Actually, it hasn't been that rough. I, 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 things, I, I, have, I have it very good. I, I, can, I, I cannot complain. Um, <clears throat> but um, I have been, uh, my, I'm on a quest, uh, many quests, one of which is to read this entire book, <laughs> A Million Random Digits with 100,000 Normal Deviates, probably if I had just like started doing this when I started making videos, I'd be done by now. But no, I have to try, and then I like do a different system, then I change the system again. We're gonna just 2022. It's all twos with a zero. 
It's a new year. I, <clears throat> we're going to start this book over. But for right now, <laughs> we're going to say thank you to Michael and read uh, from page 113, row 5620. I'm going to read these digits. 51940-44169-83459-88888. Oh my goodness, that's crazy. i got to show this to you. This entire book of random numbers. It's not an anomaly. Let's see, can I, uh, there's no light over near to the camera, but I'm trying to, I don't even remember where it is now. Here it is. Look at this. Look at that sequence. Is it going to autofocus on it? It's a little dark. 8888888. That's amazing. Um, 07752-23211-26260-08693-29368-999-56. And uh, Michael, you're a random number for you. Your personal random number is 99956. Uh, that's page 113, the end of row 5620. Uh, if, we can, if I can continue to get my act together, some of you have received these. Um, many of you have, are waiting, but um, for the members, uh, your own, very own custom uh, train whistle with the coding train laser etched on one side and then a random walk pattern generated with the random numbers in this book uh, from your own personal position and number uh, is, um, <laughs> is what I'm offering. We're going we're gonna to be making a lot more of these starting in January. Um, and uh, please join the Discord, everyone. You can find out more, all of that stuff there. Um, and um, yeah, so... Um, What's next? Ah, let me thank today's sponsor. Brilliant. Do you like learning? Do you like interactivity? Do you like the holiday season <laughs> and not know what to get somebody? Uh, you could get them a subscription to Brilliant. So Brilliant, I'll come back. I have a whole bunch of courses in math and science and interactive lessons and computer science. So many things that are just in like complete alignment. It's like there's another train that's got the words brilliant on it that's just chugging along alongside a parallel track to the coding train. Um, so I'll come back. I like to do, uh, I like, uh, you know, huge thank you to Brilliant for sponsoring uh, the coding train. And what's wonderful about it is I get to open up Brilliant around the middle of the live stream when we're taking a break and go through a challenge or a lesson in a course. So I will do that later, but uh, you can sign up for free at brilliant.org slash coding train. Let's them know that you found Brilliant from me the coding train? I'm not the coding. Am I the coding train? I don't know. That's another discussion for another time. No need for the sort of like metaphysical, philosophical quandary that we are. Am I a train? Am I a human? Who knows? Do I have legs? Yes. Ah, oh, a little bit stiff today. Um, uh, and um, yeah, oh, oh, if you, if you want to unlock all the premium stuff and all the courses, uh, or, uh, or you can give it as a gift, um, you will get 20% off. Uh, the first 200 people to do so from this link. All right. Now, what is happening today? First of all, my glasses are very dirty, and I'm going to uh, untuck my T-shirt here <laughs> and clean them off. <clears throat> I wore some special clothes for all of you today on a Sunday morning. I was like, let me find my shirt with flowers and my uh, cardigan. Is this a cardigan? Is that what you call it? Like my sweater? It's cold, but I've been running the heat all morning in this garage. Uh, you notice that if you're hearing me and seeing me without interruption, the internet is hopefully working here in the garage. It is not yet solar powered. Um, within the next two to six months, I will be uh, installing, I'm not doing this personally, <laughs> but uh, solar panels are being installed all on top of this garage where I am, hopefully powering all of the lights and the computers in here. Um, so I'm excited to um, sort of see where that leads and talk about that as I go. My, my um, desire to have the coding train, you know, to, to, to the extent of the things that I can control that are in here, powered by solar energy. Uh, um, and Kratos says, it has been a while since the last time I've seen his video. I think it was before he got his news to New York. Well, boy, do I have news for you. <laughs> uh, hopefully this is going to stabilize and I'll be uh, broadcasting from here. Uh, for at least the next uh, year plus, probably two years. Um, but I am in a new location yet again. And mostly I have things going. Th this is what I really want to work on. This Oh, and it's out of focus. This um, I like to do a lot of diagramming and things in my videos and live streams. Let's see if I can focus this. Uh, that's hopefully better. 
Um, but I'm still sort of working on what whiteboard do I want to have, how do I want to do diagramming, and all of that stuff. So coming back over here. Um, all right, so let's get going. Um, actually, actually, before I go on to the autoencoder project, I, I have a bone to pick with you, audience. I mean, it's probably my fault. <laughs> so it's really not on you, it's on me. But I want to come over here and I want to talk about the fact that I have this video, Slit Scan Time Displacement Effect Challenge. Um, I believe if you, I don't know what happened to the code here on this page. Uh, oh, maybe that's why. <gasps> oh, I have a bone to pick with me. <laughs> I've caused my own uh, problem here. No wonder. Oh, why didn't anybody say anything to me? Let me, my, let me just do this for a second. Yeah, all right. I messed something up here. So let's, let's see if we can remedy this right now. Um, I think I, um, I don't know what the issue is, and maybe somebody who's watching can do a pull request, but let me at least remedy it for you for the issue. So this, my bone that I was going to pick, what, what is, where did that expression come from? I don't know. It sounds kind of, uh, I, I need a different one. <laughs> I don't like it anymore. I want to pick anyone's bones. I don't want my bones picked. No picking. No bones picking. Please. <clears throat> but um, this is what I wanted to discuss. This video came out, and I know I'm slow, and there hasn't been as much content recently, and maybe there's not as many things for you to riff off of, but I felt like this slit scan time displacement challenge, coding challenge, set of examples, was ripe for creative twisting by you, the beautiful passengers of the coding train, to make your own special version of it and share back with me. This is what, this is what I'm here for, what I most enjoy about doing the coding train, but it seems like there haven't been made any variations. First of all, I, I, I got to really work on my language here on the website. Coming soon, based on this coding challenge by the community yet. Be the first. You could be the first and add your own. There's a link there that will show you where to add it. If you don't know how, there's a guide. There's a video with me talking about how to do it. And even better, coming in 2022, there will be a form on the website that you can use probably to just submit. I, I want to still encourage people to use GitHub and GitHub pull requests as their first foray through the coding train um, into get into that world, but um, um, working on some improvements for how challenge, um, but I, I'm realizing now that the code should be on this page. And Amir Hassan says, I've just done double pendulum. Did you submit it? Please submit it. Submit it. Let's see if there's, let's see what the most recent community and I, uh, Community contribution time. <laughs> Let's see what you, the audience, have made most recently based on the videos that I have produced here on The Coding Train. So, uh, and then let's find where that code is for that video. Uh, I'm gonna go to github.com slash coding train uh, website. Um, oh, look, pull requests. There's some things here. Oh, a lot of old stuff, not, oh, okay. I'll have to come look at this, but um, let's look at closed. Yeah, nothing, nothing, 14 days ago. The, the last contribution, here we go. The last contribution from David Beal to the diffusion limit. Now, again, this is on me. I just have not been as present and, uh, in the sort of like ecosystem of the coding train. Um, so I, that's, you know, I'm just kind of like make it through this year and, and, and start anew in 2022. But that is my New Year's resolution. You heard it here first. Figure out ways to get more people contributing their own versions. Um, you know, um, is it Raphael who does the like creative coding weekly challenge? That seems to be very successful. I'm sure there's some things I can learn uh, there. Um, but let's take a look at this one from David Beal. So, and um, we can just see it here, but I, um, just so you want to, if you want to know where it shows up. If I go <coughs> to here. And there it is. 3D DLA by David Beal. Okay. <laughs> Fade out this music. Uh, let's take a look at this. Thank you for your submission. Whoa! Oh, and I love that this is a YouTube video. Cool. Let's make it full screen. Wow. What did you make this in? I would like to know. Wow, that is so cool. 
I love it. So um, the Diffusion Limited Aggregation uh, Coding Challenge is a simulation of a kind of random motion, a Brownian motion, if you will, where, which is created by um, particles entering from outside of a space, coming in, and when they intersect another particle, they're stopped. So if, you know, I, I don't know if we can just go back to the beginning of this video to sort of see the big, that starting process, but you can see it's happening very, very fast. So each one of these particles, it, almost like these branches are coming out, and has a very organic, um, it, it can have a it can create like a tree branching like um, pattern, but in here I don't, I don't know how to characterize this. It's very it's almost like um, molecular uh, in its look. So uh, thank you for this. This is wonderful to see this in 3D. There's also something kind of uh, um, lovely going on color wise here that I can't put my finger on, but it seems like there are started as red particles and they're getting more and more blue. Um, you know, uh, uh, you know <laughs> I'm like tempted to be. Like, you know, I uh, just like, I just want to make my own version of this. I mean, I guess I did in some manner, but the version I made, the example, is just 2D um, and doesn't have this sort of 3D um, quality to it. So wonderful work. Um, thank you for this uh, community contribution. So I'm hoping um, I can kickstart getting more ways for people to share their versions and more ways for me to share them back. Um, and I look forward to thinking about ways to do that better in 2022. All right, thank you. Okay, I'm gonna scan through this just to see where it goes. Uh, whoa, oh yeah, and so it's like zooming out maybe as, uh, as unchanged colors again. This is wild. That is a really quite an impressive looking structure. <laughs> um, <clears throat> okay, um, now let's uh, close this. Um, it, it, just to sort of close the loop on this, um, if I go here, uh, you will see this is the actual code from the video. Um, and one of the things that I'm doing in this particular example that you didn't see in David's contribution is I'm animating the process of the particles entering and moving randomly and then getting stuck. Now I'm doing it really fast, sped up, because uh, you know, if I were to actually like animate each particle moving like one or two pixels per frame, <laughs> it would take a very long time to build the actual structure. Oh, and I, I guess I also have some color scheme going on here. I was like, I don't remember what I do in these coding challenges, but now I see that color scheme, scheme is mirrored in the 3D version of it. Um, uh, wonderful. I, I'm just curious here. Oh, it's the iterations, probably. The iterations is the variable that kind of control, and I should log in. Um, the iterations is the variable that controls, like, how many iterations of these particles moving am I skipping? So if I went to just like, for example, one, you would see like this is kind of, I mean, this would be like amazing to watch over an incredibly long period of time, but I can only, I, I'm going to talk for a tremendous amount of time and probably not one particle is going to stop and get stuck. Um, if I put it at 50, we can see things are kind of moving a little bit faster now. Maybe we would get there, but it was, I think I had it at 1,000. So, you know, if I, if I did it at 100,000, for example, oh, that's just going to make things, now, that, now I've lost the sort of frame rate of the sketch itself, but you can see, okay, so that's, under, anyway, you get the idea. Um, I'm, I've, I'm lost on this uh, tangent. Let's try 10,000. There we go. Um, and I, presumably, I think what I would want to do in this case is actually not draw, there's not really, once I have this iteration number up so high, there's not a tremendous amount of value in drawing the particles <laughs> moving themselves, because ultimately what we're really just seeing is um, the, um, the pattern that's emerging. So just out of curiosity, if I wanted to change that, the, those are the walkers, we could, uh, comment this out, and I would see, now I'm seeing just the sort of diffusion limited aggregation pattern uh, emerging. So there's a lot of parameters to play with here. Um, I don't want to save this actually because I've kind of messed it. I should, or I can maybe just do undo all the way back to where it was. Uh, and hit save. But what, uh, the thing that I, I'm just going to hit leave. The thing that I'm curious about here is to take a look at source code. Now, my assumption 
is what David shared here is a video rendering of it. So one, that's a beautiful way to share documentation of a project because it's very accessible. Like, yes, if you have a P5.js sketch that can run in the browser, that's just about as accessible in terms of anyone being, who happens to have a phone or a computer with a web browser um, can just click that link and see it. Um, but um, I'm assuming here that this is not done with P5.js because then presumably we could see it just running in the browser rather than have a video render of it, although it's possible that it's sl slow process that rendering it makes more sense. Anyway, <laughs> let's go. I'm assuming this is going to be processing, but I'm excited to find out. Oh, no, no. Oh, this is, <laughs> I'm so wrong. <laughs> and look at this. There it is running in the browser. So we got all the possibilities. Oh, and, and, oh, and I can control the camera with my mouse. Okay. Okay, and I can see that it's running at 30 frames per second down here. This is amazing. Uh, so now I have to guess that this is, I mean, this could be the WebGL renderer of P5, but it looks like there's a lot going on here. So, and I don't know why the chat is not scrolling for me, or maybe just nobody is making any messages in the chat. The last message I see is Rodoc saying hi. Um, and my Discord member chat is completely also dead. Am I just talking to myself here? <laughs> Hopefully people are there. Um, so what did I, uh, Sunday, maybe Sunday morning is not the best time for me to be live streaming, but it worked out for me, so here I am. Maybe you're watching this uh, as a playback. Um, I'm gonna guess that there's something 3JS going on here. Let's look at uh, view, uh, there's a lot of ways I could do this, but I'm just gonna go to view source here. Um, and uh, logo, manifest, John, John, <laughs> this is an awkward way. Okay, this is not helping me. Uh, let's do um, inspect. This is going to be an easier way to look at it. Um, and we can see here there are some JavaScript. So this is probably built. Um, let's see, let's look here. This is probably a sort of built version of this project. I'm assuming um, that this is using 3JS and maybe it's kind of embedded in one of these JavaScript files here, but um, <laughs> I don't need to get lost into this right now. Um, I can investigate this more later. Somebody can tell me. Um, I don't know if this is what library this is or, or, or what, and I could probably click on this and maybe see something more, but I assume these are all sort of built-in minified files, so it's going to be hard to sort of parse through and, and, and find. And then I see people saying, uh, <laughs> saying hi now in the chat. And, and, and Mini Jimmy has the same uh, reaction that I have by saying, sorry, I am in awe of the patterns. All right. All right. I've got to get moving here because uh, if you've watched any coding train before, you'll know that what tends to happen is I, it's just a lot of sort of digressions and tangents and sort of going off in arbitrary directions. Um, and what I've, well, the thing that I've been enjoying that I've been trying recently, just over the last few weeks, is picking one project that really requires a, 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 a lot of time to sort of dig into and dig through and try to build and debug and iterate and adjust. And so on my list for a very long time has been to investigate um, programming my own autoencoder. Now, not all the way from scratch in the sense that I'm like writing all the neural network code myself, but just uh, r using a machine learning library like TensorFlow.js. And I've been doing that over the course of the last live, two live streams. So I just want to first summarize where I am <laughs> so far in the project and where I want to go. And I also want to address um, the pull request that I haven't been able to merge yet. I don't know if the chief who submitted this pull request is in the audience right now. Uh, if you are, say hi in the chat. Um, and then also I want to look at this pull request, which I did merge. Um, I don't know, got over this. So an Abarup's question, what did you do last time, is exactly where I want to be. So um, let me walk over. And I won't be able to see the chat while I'm over there. I'm looking to remedy that. Let me just have a look that looks like the focus is reasonable on there. Um, Curverse, I saw your question about coding challenges. I'll, I'll try to address that later. Um, so <laughs> the project that I've been building is in some ways like an ancient technology at this point <laughs> in terms of what is it, uh, in terms of how 
synthetic media, generative images, and I just want to see that there's green bars for my audio, which there are, are created through machine learning. Now, you might have heard of things like a GAN, a generative adversarial network. You might have heard of StyleGAN, or StyleGAN2, or StyleGAN3, and you might have seen this face, this person does not exist, and this explosion of uh, synthetic um, cats and dogs and people and cars and all sorts of things that AI models are generating based on a set of training data of real-world imagery. And there's all sorts of ways they can be fantastical and look very dreamy and artists are making use of this stuff. So for me, where does learning about how those things work begin? Well, it begins probably in the basics of, you know, what is a neural network? Um, I do have uh, videos on that, but for me in terms of like if, if we've got, if I'm making this assumption as having sort of gotten through some of the fundamental aspects of the sort of core pieces of neural network based machine learning, the autoencoder, a particular architecture for a neural network is a wonderful starting point to learn about the process by which a model can generate an image and how you, you as the sort of artist or the creator or the programmer can manipulate that model to generate images in certain ways. Um, so uh, reference, most important reference probably for you to watch, uh, there's no post-production here so I can't just fly this in right now to show you a preview, would be the autoencoder video from the YouTube channel Two Minute Papers. So that's a good two, three minute video just you know, explaining anything that I'm about to try to do right now in a much better fashion. Um, but the a neural network, and again, the, my previous sessions, I went through this in much more detail. Uh, I even did a recap of this part in, the, in the, the last session. But just to quickly do that again, um, the idea of an autoencoder, the starting point of how you think of it is a copying machine. An image is the input, and we want that same image to come out as the output. The trick here is that, of course, that's a very easy thing to do because we can copy an image. I have this many pixels, and we make a new image and take each pixel and copy it over. But what happens if, as you're copying the image, you're, you're constrained to work with less and less data? So we, in a way, you're compressing the image and then decompressing it, or encoding it and decoding it. What happens is, through that process, if the neural network uh, learns all these weights the weights are sort of like the make the core sort of like settings, the parameters of the neural network itself. It learns the weights to copy an image. Then we could take out the part where the image comes in as input and just ask the neural network to make, to make outputs based on what is essentially random inputs or noisy inputs. Then we're going to generate new images in the style of what we started with. That's the idea of an autoencoder. Um, that will lead to ideas like a variational autoencoder and all sorts of other kinds of generative models. So, <laughs> ah, uh, where am I? I have built this already. I, and I think this is where I should go back to my code. I have done everything that is in this diagram except for that last part of take off the sort of first half and start to just generate new images. That's what I hope. And again, it's, it's not like I've been working on this, like I, I haven't thought about this once. Well, not I've thought about it, but I haven't done anything on this project since the last live stream. So I don't know how this is gonna go. Uh, you could go do something else with your Sunday and come back and then like watch it on 2X or speed through it and just look at the end. <laughs> that might be advisable. But if you're here, mwah, thank you, I appreciate you. <laughs> I'm, gonna go for, I'm gonna go for it. So let's look at the code pieces that exist already. Um, and Raj just asks, sorry to be alone in a desert. First of all, nobody, I hope nobody watching the coding train, the thing that they're coming away from is a feeling of being alone in the desert. <laughs> Although I actually have this, I, I've never been to Joshua Tree and I was looking, I'm just, I don't know. I don't know why this came up, but I was looking at places to go visit in Joshua Tree. That's a desert that I could conceivably get to. Uh, I mean, I'd have to take an airplane. Anyway, I don't know what we're talking about here. I got off track. Don't feel alone. Um, the, the, the vibe here, the working assumption is that this place is for people who don't know what the thing I'm talking about is. And a lot of times I'm just figuring it out myself. You should ask. Of course, you know, the reality of the situation is I can't every session go back to the very beginning of like what's a variable. <laughs> but you should feel welcome here wherever you are in that journey. And there, if I've done my job, if this is a job correctly, I can point you towards resources to find all of the um, 
you know, the prerequisites, if you will, to what I'm working on today. So hopefully that explanation helped you a little bit. And Mo Moby Dick is asking, would a reverse autoencoder work, where you give it more information in the middle so it learns to opposite? I don't, I don't know. I don't know if I fully understand that question, if I'm being honest. I have to think about this one more. It's a fascinating idea. And this is, this is one of the things that I'm particularly invested and interested in. What are the ways that machine learning models that are maybe trained to do a particular kind of task for a real world application can be uh, tweaked, broken, uh, done in the sort of like uh, turned upside down for creative um, and maybe uh, um, outputs and hopefully to be sort of critical and investigate um, what are some of the sort of issues that the world has and I'm you know being kind of trite about this, but uh, with the fact that these machine learning models are playing such a sort of fundamental role in our daily lives. Um, Ajibi asks, do I need to know how TensorFlow to follow? Um, it, you know, so no, because my, I'm, I'm, I'm here welcoming you in <laughs> whether or not you know anything about TensorFlow. Um, uh, you know, it, and I, at least the stuff that I'm going to do today, like a lot of the TensorFlow stuff is done already, so it won't be the focus. So it is... Um, it is a, a sort of core essential part of what I'm doing right now, but I will try to explain things as I go. Okay. Um, all right. Lars is asking about generalized AI. I don't have uh, I don't have an answer for that question. Around the corner, I would say no if I'm guessing. But what do, what do I know? I'm just here in my garage on a sunny day with a computer trying to make some squares appear out of random numbers. <laughs> All right. If you're wondering why I constantly look over here, it's because that's where the chat is, that's where my monitor is. I mean, I have it positioned here because then I can sort of gesture at what I'm doing, but I, I feel like sometimes I'm spending too much time live streaming and looking over in this direction. Okay, so um, let's look at the pieces of what I have so far. And uh, I had the heat running in here all morning to like try to warm it up. It is very noisy, so I don't run it while I'm streaming, but I already feel like it's getting a little bit cold in here. So when I take a break, I'll crank it up again. Um, it's oil-based heat right now in this garage with like a very old boiler. Um, but I would like to figure out, once I have solar panels, if I can do some type of like heat pump. Maybe that'll be quieter. I don't know. Um, all right, so first things first. Uh, I need training data. So if we're looking back to this, uh, di this um, diagram, images have to come in, right? Images have to come in. What are the, what's the training data? Um, it's very sort of rud rudimentary training data right now. It's, I have a processing sketch that just draws random squares. So I'm going to run it. The images it's saving are actually just 28 by 28 pixels because I'm working with very low resolution right now just to have things run fast and sort of work and be easy to deal with. Um, I would like to today start having this generate different kinds of shapes, like triangles and circles and squares, because I think the sort of ending animation that I'm imagining of sort of like these shapes morphing around in the latent space, I'll talk about what that is, um, would be more interesting. So that exists. Then the next thing that I have, which um, I haven't even opened yet, is a node project. And the node project is... All of the code for it is essentially here in index.js. And the node project, I'm going to talk you through it now. I mean, if you want to watch like four or five hours of me live streaming building all this, you can. Um, the node project is uh, architecting this particular, uh, whoops, wrong uh, button, this particular um, uh, neural network architecture. <laughs> I'm sorry to use the same word multiple times. Uh, importing in the training images, running the training, and then uh, producing output images as well. And I, I went around in circles with this because I was, um, you know, ultimately I think moving this into the browser will make more sense. Um, but, um, uh, so you can see some things are commented out. So I was trying to use like Node Canvas and different things, but I ultimately I just using this library called GIMP, which you can see up here. GIMP is a library for manipulating images in Node. So these are the steps. We can say I have this like main function where I call build model. Build model, we'll look at the code in a second, creates all of these layers. 
uh, that are in the diagram. Then I need to load all 550 images. I have 500 training images and 50 test images. Now, I made a huge mistake, which I, haven't, which I need to address. Uh, so this code, I'm going to um, pull in the new code from the pull request in a second. So there's a big mistake here. Um, but So this code is like slightly wrong. <laughs> but the idea here is the first 500 images are the training images. And then the next 50 images are the test images. So I can train the model and then generate outputs by running the test images through and see how well the model does copying them, essentially. And so uh, I did, I, I forgot that I did this. This is great. There's some like refactoring. There's basically build model, load images, train, test. So if we wanted to look at any of these functions, I think looking at build model might be interesting to see. This is, this is the part that I forgot who just asked this, like, do I need to know TensorFlow? No, but this is going to look kind of a little bit scary to you. I mean, it looks scary to me, and I, I sort of know, I know-ish TensorFlow. So the idea is I'm making a sequential model. Uh, a sequential model, this is called sequential, because the data flows through all these layers in a sequence, feed forward left to right. I mean, we could draw it any way we want. That's arbitrary, but it is sequential. And then um, uh, now I need to add the layers. So the first layer receives 784 inputs because the images are 28 by 28. That's 784 pixels. The next layer, uh, and basically it takes those pixels and sends the data into 256 nodes. And then those 256 nodes send their data into 128. That's the encoder. So I could actually add a comment here, which would be like encoder. Oh, my hands are so cold. <laughs> I'm going to have to turn the heat on. Uh, and then decoder. What's the temperature outside? Let me just tell everybody what the temperature outside is where I am. Uh, huh, it's only 40 degrees. Um, and sunny. High of 43 today, low of 28. This is in Fahrenheit, of course. Not of course, but. Of course, because I'm an American here who living in the dark ages <laughs> of, <laughs> of <laughs> measurement systems. Uh, then the decoder is, we go back from 128 to 256, and then back to 784. And there's these activation functions, and there's the optimizer and the law, all these things. These are things I've kind of addressed a little bit. But you know, again, this is the territory of other videos I have about um, the pieces of neural network themselves. But, and then we call this train function, where this is interesting. Normally, you're pairing some, like if I were training an image classifier, I would have the images and the labels. So I'd have the training data and the targets. But I don't have that, because the target of the training data is the training data itself. That's the sort of twist here with an autoencoder. I'm trying to have data flow in, compress it down, and the same exact stuff come out. So that's really this weird thing. It looks like a mistake to me, because it should be like X train and Y train, or X train and Y targets. Um, but number of epochs is how many times through all the data. Batch size is how many uh, data points do I do before I start adjusting some weights, et cetera. Um, and um, yeah, and there's some stuff about loading the images, and I'm using this GIMP library. So again, I don't want to run through all of this, but that's the idea. So let's try running this right now and see what happens. So first thing first, oh no, let's correct the error. So the first thing I'm going to do is going to say kit, git pull origin main. So I've already merged a pull request that came in. Um, and so I merged it on the GitHub website. And now this is the command that I can type to receive that image here, that, that change uh, locally. Oh, I don't know why the, I'm getting this weird message. And I'm also, I, <laughs> all right, so we have to deal with this. <laughs> Two things have gone wrong here. One is, um, I guess the way my Git is set up on this computer, I haven't specified a sort of default way to reconcile. So what, what if you've made changes in more than one place? How are those changes reconciled with each other? Um, there are different ways of doing it, and I'm not going to get into that right now. But I'm going to just, I want the default one to just be the one that I'm going to do. So I'm going to take this command and type it in. Now let's call pull origin main again, but we're going to have another issue. So it's saying, like, aha, you've made local changes to the following file that would be overwritten because I'm trying to pull in some changes that were made on the GitHub website server itself. Um, but I also was messing around with it here. So the only change I actually made was just, and I could actually see it. If I do, I think git diff will show me. 
it's just adding these two comments, encoder and decoder. So I could undo those. But um, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say git uh, add dot git commit. Um, and I'm going to put a message in um, adding encoder and decoder comments. There we go. And then now I should be able to pull the fix. No problem. It's merging it. Uh, I'm not going to type in any more information about that. And there we go. So now that's coming. Now, what was that change? <laughs> Let's go take a look. Uh, how does this 40 minutes in this live stream, and I've, I've barely gotten anywhere yet. I guess that's the, hopefully I've been talking a lot in ways that help you understand the world, <laughs> at least focused in on machine learning and JavaScript and that sort of stuff. Um, and Curverse is talking about reducing the latent dimension to something lower from some, yes, yes, yes. My goal actually, by the way, is to have a browser page with sliders on it where you can manipulate each dimension individually. I, 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 it does not seem realistic that I'm going to get that today. <laughs> I don't think this should be like four parts. I really thought I could finish this, but that's my goal. So having it less. So let's look at fixing number one. So, <clears throat> um, and actually we can just look at the issue which maybe um, described it better. So you're using the same images for training your network and testing it. This is due to array.prototype.slice start returning a copy of the array from the index start to the end and not zero to the start. So I had, if you, what, what is this, what's happening here? I had, um, this is what I had. And I did not realize that slice 500 slices out the array from 500 to the end, not zero to 500, which is what I wanted. And then uh, now if I just put 500, it'll take, I don't have to put the end number because it'll take that to the end. So that is, a huge mistake that I had. Uh, in the end, I don't know to what extent it's going to make that much of a difference because everything I'm doing here is, is utterly simplistic and somewhat trivial. So, so what that I use those 50 images. But let's try um, running it. And I think if you were if you were here last time, I was talking about how an auto encoder can be used to denoise an image, and I, and I wasn't getting that to work. This is that's probably why I'm not going to go back to that right now because I think that'll send me down you know, at least a half an hour of investigation. <laughs> but let's run this again. And it's training the model, hopefully now off of 500 images, not 50. And it's going to do a 250 epochs. We're seeing the loss go down, which the loss is sort of a summary of the error, like how well is it currently copying the images. Uh, hi, Amr. I'm reading your message, and thank you, Tom. I don't know what the penguins are for, but I love penguins. Uh, I, we, I had not gotten a loss below 0.1. You can see it's really uh, settled. So clearly, one of the things this, we can learn from this is that if the loss is sort of like frozen, uh, you know, it went down to 0 0.105, but you can see it's not really changing very much at like whatever number of epochs I'm at. Um, so probably training the model for 250 epochs is quite unnecessary, but let's let it finish that. So after it trains it for those 250 epochs, it's then going to generate 50 new images. Okay, great. So just let's go look at the uh, directory that I'm in. And um, we can see, whoops, wait a second. Where did it load the images from? I'm confused. Well, let's just see what's in the output. <laughs> it worked. I'm, I, I'm a little bit confused because where did it load? The, I don't see the training data actually in the, so hold on, load data square. But there's nothing in this. Oh, no, it's there. I just don't know why. Oh, yeah, it's just the Mac OS was acting weird. So this is the, sorry about that. N ignore the last minute. I was just confused. Um, so this is, these are the training images, right? These are 28 by 28 pixel squares that I generated in processing. Um, and then, and I'm getting all sorts of interesting um, 
commentary in the chat, so thank you for that. I can't, it's not possible for me to address all of it as I'm going, but I, I appreciate it, and I often do go back and read it afterwards. Um, so, all right, so now what I want to look at, just to make sure things are working the way I intended them to, is look at the output. So these are the generated images. Now, I cannot even discern the difference. Um, in th my assumption would be that these are slightly fuzzier, like generally speaking, my experience with working with an autoencoder is uh, the output images are going to have a sort of fuzzier, less uh, precise quality to them than the input <laughs> images. But in this case, I'm working with such like fixed kinds of images, squares, um, that have of just black and white pixels at such low resolution, I'm not sure how we're going to discern the difference. So I want to see if I can get this stuff into a place where I can manipulate it. So that's what I want to work on. I do need to take a break. Uh, so I wonder if actually it makes sense. Usually I just keep going and going, but maybe I should just take a short break right now. If you generate the images as 28 by 28, instead of reducing them, the images are sharper. I'm not sure what that means, Mini Jimmy. Um, and I'm of the wrong. So let's, let's, let's go, let me go a little bit further, sort of think about what I'm doing here. Well, <clears throat> um, so is there a way, this is what I don't know how to do. My idea here is that, uh, and, I, and I do want to make this, like let's actually try this. Let's, let's do a little bit of this. Let's do it. I don't know why I'm, let's have the autoencoder go down to 64. I, mean, I don't know how many layers it makes sense to do. What if I just like went to 16? Like I want to have 16. That's my goal. Um, could I possibly just go from 128 to 16? Is that like a terrible, like silly thing to do? And then this would go back to 128. Should I put more in between? I don't know, but let's just see what happens if I go down to a really small number. And, um, and then also the number of epochs, where is that? Oh, oh train model, uh, that's a parameter I pass in. Um, train model, 250, let's just do 100. Let me run this again. And I, while, I'm run, while it's running, I'm going to talk about what it is I don't know how to do. <clears throat> so what I'm hoping I can figure out to do is uh, how do I take this neural network architecture and basically make, where is it, this the input. So how do I delete all of this and actually add, add data to produ from predict inserted into here? And yes, uh, Blue TJ says I suspect it gets even fuzzier. This is what I'm trying to test right now. So we got around the same like loss, and I could look 1049. These are new images, but honestly, we can see with 16, no problem. I mean, it's sort of hard for me to believe that. Did I like not save the code or something? <laughs> like, like, like if I change this to two, like it really shouldn't work, right? So let's just make sure that this doesn't work. Let's change that to two. Because otherwise maybe something is wrong. Okay, this is good news. The loss is not going down. I have a lot to say. Uh, I'm kind of picking the activation functions very arbitrarily. I've talked about activation functions in other videos. There's relu, which is not how you say it, but that's how I say it, and sigmoid. And um, uh, um, so I'm hoping the images that come out are no good here. Let's see. Ah, they're not so bad. They're just. Uh, they're all basically the same. It's just like a much bigger, fuzzier square. It's like it only knows how to do one thing. So that's great to see. Um, let's try, I want to see, like, what is the minimum? Can I get it down to eight? 
Again, I wanted to have more complex imagery, so I don't know what the point of getting it down to eight is with this, but let's see. I recall the loss being at 1.05. All right, so this looks pretty good with eight. There's, yeah, and Blue TJ writes exactly what I was thinking. There's leaky relu, leaky relu, and many rectified linear unit is what that stands for. I, I don't know how much that explains anything to anybody, but and many others. It's quite hard to find the right one and know which one fits in your use case. Yeah. So to be clear, my motivation here is exploration and explanation, not optimization, not speed, not efficiency, not even producing a meaningful result. I want to understand how these systems work, and I want to be able to feel like I have some agency in uh, manipulating how they work, in, and I, I feel like I do simply by the fact that I can change the total number of neurons at that middle layer, the sort of smallest layer, and see a very different result. It means things are working as expected that match the way that I understand how these systems work. Um, so you've got to fix the sigmoid. Um, all right, let me, let me just see here. I, what I wanted was, I, know, I want sigmoid as the last activation function because I want my values to be, to be between 0 and 1. But I don't know if the suggestion here is that I should just try ReLU all the way through or even don't worry about it, just have it. I'm just going to leave it as is right now. But... Um, I would love to um, and Curveverse is saying that they got an autoencoder to work fine with just two latent dimensions. I have two sigmoids. I have three sigmoids. I don't know. <laughs> I don't understand the comment. Okay, I'm going to come back to that. Uh, the thing that I want to do now is figure out how do I um, how do I start from here, once the model I is here. So maybe what I should do is first save, the, save and load the model. So hopefully this is as easy as, um, let's look on the TFJS documentation. I'll take my break after saving and loading. Layers model, save sequential model is what I'm using. Well, there's no save function here, but is this ultimately a layers model because sequential like extends that or something? Save, model.save. I don't, a local storage is interesting. Oh, but I'm not in the browser, so that I do not want to do. Um, I mean, I could just move this to the browser. It's a little bit silly, to be honest, that I'm doing this in Node, um, but let's try this. So what happens if I... Let's forget about testing the model for a moment. Oops. And let's just try save. And what if I do, like if I give it a directory, will it put it all in there? Let's just see. And let's, let's do this for just like 10 epochs, just to sort of see. So I'm going to try, I'll just call it model. Let's just see if, this will save the model in a directory called model. We're just doing 10 epochs. Okay. Model is not defined. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. What is wrong with me? It is called autoencoder. Oh, I forgot to address the other pull request. Um, could not find a URL. Well, so I don't want it to be a URL. Do I just need to have a folder called model? Will that do it? Let's see. No. <laughs> no! <laughs> this did not work. Okay. Um, index DB, downloads, my server. What about a file? Does it really not work just to give it a direct? I, uh, it 
Towns, okay. Uh, all right, let's look at the, so let's address the pull request, which maybe has a solution for it in it. So, um, where, where am I going to? Auto, um, yeah, here we go. All right, so let's look at this pull request. And actually, let's just go to this issue. So this is incredible, what uh, the chief has submitted here. Um, <coughs> I'm just going to read here. Want to make the code a bit more readable and organize everything in its own class and file. Yes, 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 so do I. I opened a pull request number three for it. I added a data source class, which can provide training and testing data, and then there's an interface for it. So more data like random, MNIST, arbitrary images, blah, blah, blah. Um, more layers, divided into an encoder and decoder. It can save its state so you don't have to train it every time. The image transformer takes an array of normalized pixel images and saves it to disk. So there's so much more here in terms of organizing, refactoring the code. So I didn't feel like I can merge this because um, it's too, it's like too, too good. <laughs> it's like too much of a radical improvement over what I had before that I won't be able to easily continue this process, this explanatory process I have. So the chief, if you're watching, I don't know the best one, I, I don't know what to do here with this. One is I could wait and eventually merge this in later once the project is totally finished. But I would like to have a version that kind of, I'd either, or, or maybe I can draw inspiration from this, and like implement some of these pieces during a live session. But I think what might make sense is for this to live um, in, uh, in a, in, as documented in the README for this repo, linking out and explaining these improvements so that somebody could sort of see the code that I've written in the live streams, follow that along, and then see how there is a version of it that's just much more thoughtful in terms of how it is organized. So let's think about that. The thing that I would really like is an excellent README documenting all of these pieces. Um, Expects a file extension, maybe? Um, a branch would work, but um, so a pull request with a nice README that links to the different live streams and kind of like the, um, the two minute papers video and it kind of has some sample images in it. I mean, I should be doing that, I just haven't had time. So if somebody wants to really think about how this whole process could be documented in a README, linking to the Chief's work and all of that, that would be amazing. Um, but let's take a look at the actual uh, pull request because maybe we can get some hints for how to save and load the model from the disk, because I'm not seeing it, obviously, in the TensorFlow.js documentation. So let me just look for save. This is for saving the images. Saving the images, autoencoder, save, oh! So literally, I'm doing it right, but I just need to put, oh, and it's, Oh, and it's divided into an encoder and a decoder. So that's also a, probably a clue to what I actually want to do. Huh, I have to understand. So let's first just get it to save. So is it just this? File colon slash slash model with another slash. Let's try this. Little tenny box here. Yeah, oh, I think this might have worked. So one thing we can do is we can look at, oh, I, I've got it here, what am I doing? Uh, we can see the model files, we can see this, um, um, the JSON, which is basically a uh, configuration file describing the architecture of the model. It's a sequential model. Here's all, the here's all the layers, the kind of layer it is, the activation function, the number of units, et cetera, et cetera. So that's great. So then um, let's save a model trained to 100 epochs. And um, where do I want to do that? So go back to 100. All right, almost to 100. We've got down to 0 0.108 of a loss. 107! 
Can we get to a six? Show me a six. Show me a six before you finish. I want to see that six. That's fine. We got <laughs> 0 0.107. Now, this should be, just to be sure, 11.01 AM. Yep, that's a new model. Overwrote the previous model. By the way, this weights.bin file is all of the trained weights. So in theory, every time I'm saving the model, this is not changing at all. Model.json, the weights are what I'm changing. So I could have different weights file if I wanted to try different configurations and swap them in and out. What are the weights, just for any of you who might be kind of just joining right now? It is the value, the sort of weight of every single connection between any given node in the system and another node. Uh, well, the layers are connected sequentially, so. Um, you know, the first, first layers aren't connected to the last layer, they're connected through each other. All right. Um, all right, now, in theory then, there shouldn't be, I should be able to, um, and it's, this is very awkward what I'm doing here, but I'm just going to, uh, let me just do it this way. Let me comment out all of this one more time. And then let's get test back. Oh, I do have to load the images. Sorry. Um, and let's see, can I do auto const auto encoder equals await? How do I call load? <laughs> let's just look in our cheat sheet. <laughs> This is terrible. I should look in the documentation. Model.load. Huh? I'm confused. All right, I'm going to look at, let's look at the documentation. So where is load? Save, load sync. I don't need to load sync. Load layers model. Okay, that should be it. TF load layers model. Okay. And then I should be using the same path, but maybe I say model.json here. So let's see if this works. I'm going to, just to be 100% sure, I'm going to delete all of these outputs that I had previously. And now, Instead of building the model and training the model, I'm just loading the trained model from a particular file. This is how I'm going to be able to just move right into the browser because I can, um, I'll do, yeah, I'm, once I have a saved, I'm going to use Node just for training the model, and then I'll, once I've saved it, the files will just bring it right into the browser, I think. I think that makes the most sense to do. Yeah, I was thinking like, oh, I could set up like a web server and have the browser send like get requests and the, the server like generate the images and send it back, but that's like a whole lot of unnecessary trouble right now. Um, so let's run this. Okay, ah, I think this might have worked. Output, yeah, 11.04, okay, we're, we did it. Yes, all right, we're in really good shape here. Um, so I'm gonna take a short break just so I can turn the heat back on and uh, uh, check out Brilliant as a sponsor for a moment, but let me just see. I saw somebody ask, um, in order to recover the information of the squares, you should use ReLU in the decoder part as activation functions because they are inverse functions. The last layer is okay as sigmoid. Okay, that sounds very reasonable to me. <laughs> Thank you. And Kay asked, what exactly does an autoencoder do? Um, unfortunately, so an autoencoder, just as a, like a one sentence, is a copying machine. It's taking inputs and trying to generate the same output while compressing the data inside of a neural network. There's a lot more to say about that. The two minute papers video on an autoencoder and my earlier explanation in today's live stream should give you much more detail. Um, but just for anybody who just happened to tune in right now. So what's coming next? I hope everybody can stick around. Please stick around. Um, I'm going to just take a, sh a short break. But what's coming next is um, I'm going to take this trained model and move it into the browser so that I can see the images appear in the browser and animate them, which will be very exciting. Um, so before I do that, I want to thank today's sponsor of the coding train. 
Brilliant! Um, I can't emphasize <laughs> how important it is when you're learning a new concept to be able to try it yourself. So me demonstrating stuff in this video I hope is entertaining for you. I hope it's turning the wheels in your brain. Maybe you're even doing it along with me or you're trying it later. That's the way to learn. But Brilliant is all about trying it yourself in spades. Topics in math, in science and computer science, anything you can think of, there are lessons and challenges and courses and puzzles. And all of them are interactive that allows you to try it yourself. So um, I'm going to uh, switch back over to the Brilliant website itself. Um, you Just before I do though, that's the URL. You can actually sign up for free. There's a ton of stuff you can do on Brilliant for free. If you use that link, it lets them know you found out about Brilliant through the coding train. Thank you. Um, and also that link will give you the opportunity to have a 20% discount on the premium subscription. But even better than buying it for yourself, <laughs> let me just quickly mention uh, that uh, you'll notice this button up here because I already have them logged in with a premium account. This gift premium, it is gift giving season and uh, it's hard to find things to buy for people. It's also, I don't know, you know, one of those is plastic and packaging and uh, so gifting a premium subscription to Brilliant for somebody who loves learning, I mean, that's what I'm going to be doing for people. Um, uh, um, you can do that and you'll get this, uh, through the same link, you'll get the 20% uh, discount, that link there. So um, I can't recommend that enough. Hmm. Let's look at this. I, I was kind of going to go to the logic. There's a bunch of courses, so I can show you just really quickly. Like these are what the interactive lessons look like. Their logic course has been totally redone with lots of new interactivity. So you can see like there's a lot of explanation and then interactive things you can do. We're talking about neural networks, like all these things I'm talking about, about weights. Um, we can see there's a whole course all about neural networks that you can browse through. Um, it's a great complement. Um, Oh, and I'm speaking of which, Daniel Montegrano said, can you try loss equals mean squared error? And uh, if you want to know what mean squared error is and all that stuff, I have a feeling that the Brilliant Course explains that stuff really, really well. Uh, so thanks for that chat message. So I think what I want to do today is, uh, I'm kind of, again, like I didn't have a plan for this. So um, if I go to courses, you can see these are two courses that I would certainly recommend. Beautiful Geometry is personally my favorite right now. And then also the Logic course. We can scroll through and see all of these popular ones, recommended for parents and teachers, learning paths. You know, you can, you, you, so if you're watching, these probably all appeal to you. <laughs> so, um, but I think today, for fun, let's try this 9-9 plus challenge that I have not looked at. Sometimes the best way to solve a problem is by just doing something with it. Uh-huh, that's what I've been talking about. But then slow down and think about what you're doing. For example, think about what you need to do to solve just one part of the problem. Here's a warm-up challenge. Try it yourself. Drag the tiled numbers up into the plus. Note that the sum of all the available tiles is zero, yet the goal is to make the row sum and columns both positive. Oh, I did not know that. Uh, oh, I did. Wait, no. Oh, no, no. No, I didn't because that's negative one. So I didn't do it right. Uh, when I first see this, some people refuse to even try to solve it. They glance at it and claim it's, it's impossible. Yeah, it's impossible. <laughs> I can't do it. Oh, I can put this in the middle? Well, hello. No, this goes here, and this goes here. I did it! <laughs> yes! <laughs> if you start by filling the rows from sum to one, how many different ways to do that? Okay, three, eight, twelve, okay. Uh, so, uh, uh, so now it's going to explain two goes in the middle. Yeah, this is basically what I did. Thank you very much. Um, I, uh, um, your solution might look a little different as long as the zero and negative one are together in the same row or column, and the one and negative two are together in the other, both sums will be correct. Um, so we've shown that it's definitely possible to arrange negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2 into a plus. There's a positive. Let's take that one step further. Is it true that if you arrange any five number tiles in a plus and put a positive value in the center, the row sum plus the column sum will be larger than the sum of the five tiles? Can you prove why this is true? Well, that totally makes sense intuitively because you're using the, the center tile twice and you're using all the other tiles once. So as long, um, no matter what, 
uh, it's going to be more because you're adding more numbers, essentially. Okay, wrap things up. Here's a bonus challenge that's a fair bit more complex than the plus arrangement. However, it can be solved using the same algebraic strategies to make the puzzle above and today's challenge solvable. Oh, I have to get five, five, five everywhere. Well, should I try this or should I just, let me just move on to the challenge, or though maybe I should try this. <laughs> uh, I mean, if the zero, my, my intuition is that the zeros and ones should just be in the corner. Oh, but that's going to be, but the zeros, I don't have enough zeros to put in the corner. But if I did that, Right, that's five, that's five. This won't be five. Oh, but now I can do this. Oh, but that's only four. All right, what am I missing here, people? We've got everything but this one. Can I, what if I move this here and this? What if I put a two in the corner? Oh, now I'm confused. What number should go in the corner? Wait, hold on again. Let's put the two here. The threes can't be together. So the threes always have to be in the... How many threes are there? Just three? Look at the chat. Oh, no, nobody's solving this for me in the chat. <laughs> oh, I have to fit in with the awkwardness of not being able to figure it out. Okay. <clears throat> um, what am I missing? I should have read all the explanation. So, so the ways to, add, to make five out of these numbers and only have four numbers are one, 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 two. 2, 2, 1, 3, 2, 0, 0, 3, 2, 0, 0. So is, are, is 3 in the corner going to help me? Or is 2 in the corner going to, 1 in the corner going to help me more? What if I put all the 1s in the corners? There's only 3 of each? Are there, I'm confused. Yeah, there's, hold on, reset. Yeah, there's three of each, I see. <laughs> Definitely want high number in the corner to be used twice. Yeah. Okay, three. Hello, come on. Three. So if that three is there, uh, let's put this three here. Let's think about this. Then now, if, where could a two go? Um, but the only other place to put a three, I could put a three here. All right, so let's think about this. If the three is here, if I put twos here, oh, I can't put two, uh, everything has to be a zero. What if I did that? Oh, I can't, there's not four zeros. So one of these has to be a one. then one of these can, these can be zeros. And then three, ah, oh, no, 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 no. So close, but no. Because the one is gonna mess everything up here. You have a total of 18, you wanna make it add up to 20, so the tile you need to reuse has to add up to two. Well, oh, that's interesting. So maybe the ones, or what needs to be reused. Just one, one? Oh yeah, let's think about this. This is the strategy. Oh, this is great. Three times three is nine, plus six is 15, plus three is 18. But I need to have a total of 20. So a one being reused is one extra, and another one being reused is another extra. Okay, this makes sense. This makes sense as a way of following it. Now, then these have to be zero. So then a three and a two can go here. A three can go here. 
a three can go here, and then a one, no, oh, a three can go here, and a zero, then a one, oh, I think I did it, and a two, and a two. Ta-da! <laughs> Thank you forever. That, so that was the logic that was being explained that I like scanned over. Woo! First of all, by the way, these are so fun. Like, if I, what I really would like to do is make a P5JS sketch where you can make these puzzles. I mean, that's, um, all right. Oh, and uh, so I, maybe I could have also done this. Mike on the box says all the corners are zero, but one is a two. Maybe it would also work that way. So I, I'd love to try, maybe are there two solutions? All right, so now here's the actual challenge. Is it possible to arrange five square tiles numbered one, two, three, four, five into a plus so that the sum of the three tile column and sum of the three tile row? So we need to add up to 18, and these numbers add up to 9, 12, 14, 15. So I need three more. No, it's not possible. I was going to put this as a poll, but I think it's not possible because there's no number I could put in here twice to give me three extra. Because one gives me one extra, two gives me two extra, three gives me, oh no, three gives me three extra, yes. <laughs> three has to go in the center. <laughs> That's totally wrong. I don't know what I was thinking there. I was thinking like three doesn't divide into two, like so I can't put a one and a half in the center, but no, I just need three more. Did I do that right? Let's see. Uh, nine, I, 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 you know, I, I usually like to do these with a poll in the chat. <laughs> but there's, uh, so I could, do, let's, let's just make the poll it possible or not possible while I'm figuring this out. I mean, I think I, hopefully I was right. So I'm going to make the poll possible or not. Yes or no. No, no, no add another option. How do I delete that now? No, delete, okay. So there should be a poll that went up into the chat just now. Um, it might take a minute to post where you can just give me, is it possible or not? And I'm going to work it out. So we need to add them up to nine. Wait, what? I'm so confused. 18, nine. How do I do? Oh, no, no. Four. Okay, okay, okay. The five and the four can't be together, obviously. That's eight, yeah, nine, <laughs> okay, this was a zero. Why was the other one so much harder for me? There we go, I've made them hit submit. And now we can see the solution, which is that three, the sum of the row and column is 18, the sum of all the tiles is 15, the middle tile is counted twice, so the middle tile must be 18 minus 15 or three. And then, of course, now we just need the desired sum in the row, and then the desired sum in the column. Okay, 93% <laughs> of you said yes, you got it right. Uh, um, and so uh, thank you. I, like, is this not fun? Like, this is what I want to do later today with my free time. Are you like, it's like, the, uh, um, and uh, I just want to emphasize, like, um, if you like a lot of the algorithmic art stuff or generative art stuff that I do on the channel, the Beautiful Geometry course is really the one for you. So thank you, Brilliant, for sponsoring the Coding Train. If you're watching and have a minute right now, I turn the heat on <laughs> uh, to sign up at brilliant.org slash coding train. You could do that for free. If you'd like to buy the premium subscription for yourself or gift it to a friend or loved one or anyone, um, you, you'll get it. Uh, the first 200 people to do that will get 20% off. Okay, I'm going to be back in about... Uh, two or three minutes to see if we can get the autoencoder running in the browser. So don't go anywhere. Come back. Stay with me. I'll be back. I'm going to turn the heat on for two or three minutes, warm up my hands, and I'll be right back.
All right, I am back. Just out of curiosity, how loud is that hum in the background right now, which is the heater going? So I'm gonna, if it's tolerable, I think I'll leave it running for a little bit longer. All right, everyone. <clears throat> so the next thing that I need to do, um, and I'm, I'm keeping an eye on the chat in terms of the volume, is I want to just really quickly create a web page that loads the model and draws the output um, to a Canvas. <laughs> so I'm going to use P5 and TensorFlow.js. And I believe that at some point, there's no reason why I couldn't use ML5, which I would like to. But I'm right now, I'm not sure if ML5 supports all of the sort of things that I'm doing with TensorFlow.js. You might be asking, like, what's ML5? So ML5 is a JavaScript library um, that I um, help to work on with a lot of wonderful collaborators and people that is a sort of helper layer on top of TensorFlow.js to use a lot of pre-trained models and do a lot of stuff. And if you want to learn more about ML5, if you go to thecodingtrain.com under learning, uh, ML, this, uh, the, this video series um, has just a ton more stuff. So at some point, my hope would be, um, <laughs> it's oddly, I love all the comments about the sound. It's oddly soothing, tolerable. I love me some calming white noise. It's audible, but we want you to stay warm so it's all right. Sounds like a vacuum cleaner. All right, I'll leave it running for a little bit here. One of the reasons why I don't want to run it, and uh, let me just vamp for a little bit, is that I have this idea that one of the things I want to do with the coding train in the new year is make some more kind of video essay, like video essay-like videos about things like an autoencoder and narrate the process using clips from these live streams so that you could get maybe the sense of how to build the whole project in a 10 to 20 minute video. And then if you wanted to, of course, you could go back and watch all the development during the live streams. So I'd have to script that, edit that, have some animations and things. I love your feedback. I'm trying to think of like, you know, I've, I've, I'm on sabbatical for my job at NYU starting in the new year. So I'm gonna be focusing not full time on the coding train of a lot of other <laughs> projects and things to work on personally and for creative coding community, but um, I do want to ramp up and at least be doubling my time or tripling my time that I'm currently spending on the coding train, which is very, very little. So thank you, by the way, to everyone. I don't know how many of you are watching, but thank you to all of you who continue to support me <laughs> through all the ways that you do, even when I feel like I'm not doing it enough or good enough. <laughs> so I really appreciate that. Um, okay, Mike on the box is asking about the cabana. I've moved. The cabana may come back. But right now I'm, I'm in a garage, which is much bigger than the cabana. So uh, yeah, I'm, uh, OK. Uh, OK, so <clears throat> let's go back here. OK, so what I'm going to do is let's just go into this project and create a new folder. I'm going to call it, I'll call it, I mean, at some point I could have this be a full stack web application where the, you can send a message to the server to like retrain the model. So I'm going to like sort of build it in the way that I might do that. So I'm going to call this public. And in public, I'm going to create uh, index.html and um, another new file called, oops, ah, what am I doing here? Don't save. Don't save, so index.html. And then I want to create another new file called uh, sketch.js. Oops, it's in the wrong place. I'm sorry you can't see what I'm doing. Oh my goodness, I totally forgot to be recording this whole session. <laughs> so much for that whole speech on what I'm trying to do. Ah! <laughs> Oh my god, I'm the worst. I'm the worst. Well, I'm going to start recording it now. Now I'm recording it. So that whole, I mean, they could still use clip. Obviously, it's being recorded in the sense that what I'm broadcasting is being recorded, but. Uh, ah! <laughs> OK, so much for my grand plan there. Well, still, still possible. Um, 
So the uh, quickest way for me to, let me just get, let me just go to the P5 web editor. This is my HTML file. Uh, oh, whoops, that's in the wrong place. Public, yes, move. Uh, and then my sketch file is, it's very hard to type when your hands are cold. <laughs> Function draw. Uh, what? I've got some crazy autofill stuff going on here. And um, let's just do, okay, let's move the model into public as well. And then when I run the node script to train a model, we want this to go into file public. But I'm not doing that right now. What I'm doing here is, I don't need the sound library. Let's go back to the TensorFlow.js documentation. No, not overview. API reference. OK, maybe overview. Get started. Oh, there's still a nice link. There's a nice link to ML5 here. That's so lovely. Um, I'm just looking for like the um, guide, maybe. I just want to know what's, where are the script tags I need. Ah! Install. No, but I want TensorFlow.js to install. Ah! This is, why are things so hard to find? Is it just me? Is it me? Setup. There we go. I found it. It was in an obvious place. Can I use TFJS 2.0? I hope so. Why not? So let's try this. Okay, so I've got TFJS. Now, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open a separate web server. So ultimately, again, like where I might go with this project is have it all be one application, where there is a server that you can like send messages to to like train the retrain the model and do different things, and then there's a client that can load the model and do stuff. But right now, I'm just treating those as separate projects. Um, so this is the client, and you can see that my um, P5.js sketch is loading. Oh, style.css. I don't need to worry about that. So let's, I don't know what, how this got over here. Well, let's get rid of that. Great. So now I have, so the goal that I have is to see an output image in that canvas. <laughs> Uh, yeah, sorry everybody about the sound. Of course, now I'm finally recording. Now is when I have the bad sound, and I wasn't recording the whole time when I had the good sound. But I just got to get it to warm up a little bit more in here. Uh, I don't know. This is not something that I really thought about. How to? Um, once I once I once I solar power this place, maybe some electric heaters I can do that'll be quieter. We'll see. Um, okay, so now I should be able to have a variable called like autoencoder. Uh, autoencoder equals lo, uh, tf. So this should be the same exact code that I'm doing on the server. Um, the difference being, I shouldn't need the file path anymore. 
And this has to then be an async function. And let's do console log auto encoder. So let's see if this works. Well, that's a good sign. This looks good. I feel like it loaded it. I got no error, and I see an object that looks like a model. So now, if I go back to the server code and do generate, OK, x test. So now what I want to do is in the draw loop, I'm going to just feed it some noise. Um, I'm going to say no loop. Oh, where am I? I'm in the web editor. I don't want to be in the web editor. I could be in the web editor, but I'm not doing it there. Um, I'm going to say no loop. Is the font size OK for everybody? It's a little smaller than what I usually work with. Um, output is auto. No, x test has to be a tensor. So again, at some point, um, oh, where did I make x test? Images slice, so let's think about this. What is one image? Oh, I could draw an image. Oh, let's, okay. Uh, like, what if I just make the image a blank array? And I know there's a higher order function like that I could use fill. And so 784 pixels. And if I make that just like a random number, I'm just going to feed noise in right now because I'm not sure what else to do. <laughs> um, and then uh, this would be turn that into a two that image into a 2D tensor, and like I only have one, so it's just that one image in an array. Is this right? Where I images slice tensor two D images slice five hundred yeah and then and then I should be able to just call predict and then this is an a, if this is an async function. I get the new image. All right, let's just try console logging this. Call this output image. So it should just be one, and the, so I'm just doing one image. I'm creating a random no, array of noise. I'm turning it into a tensor. I'm sending it into the autoencoder. I'm getting something back out and just logging it to the console. <laughs> Let's see if this works. OK, good sign. Why did it do it twice? Why did it do it three times? Because I have no loop. I wonder if something weird about the async and the no loop. Let's get rid of draw for a second here and just do this once. And let's not log the autoencoder anymore. Let's run it again. OK, great, once. So I got my image. Now I should be able to, and this is very silly what I'm going to do, but it's, and can I just do this? Will that work with, or do I have to do, I probably have to put parentheses around the await. So that's the output image. OK, now what I could do is say load pixels. Update pixels. Oh, no, 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 no. I want to draw it bigger. So I'm going to do this. This is a little crazy, but I'm just going to draw it as a, again, sorry for all the noise in the background. But it's making it possible for me to do this right now. Um, oh, no, I need another bracket. And then I'm going to say rectangle i, <laughs> I got to fix my VS settings, i times 10, j times 10, 10. Really, square is what I want. I'm going to say fill um, out, 
output image i plus, and this should be a j, i plus j times the width, which is 28. And again, I, I'm, hard co I'm, just, I'm hard coding all sorts of stuff. Um, I'm looking at the, uh, all right, everybody, let's be nice to each other. Let's be nice to the fact that I need to run a heater. Let's be nice to the fact that we're all asking questions and not sure what's going on. I'm very confused. I'm not explaining everything. <laughs> let's be nice to each other in the chat, please. Um, so I'm looking for the pixel that corresponds with the square that I'm going to render, which is the x plus the y times the width, and then multiply this times 255. Now, this should probably just be noisiness, but let's see. Uh, oh, what, what import? Can, uh, it's trying to auto import stuff. Ah! Ah! <laughs> I've never been so excited to see a square in my life. That is insanity. Oh my goodness. I didn't even, that's funny. I could like basically have the latent space be the beginning. Wow, this is crazy. I, I weirdly, I don't know why, but I weirdly want to do this just because I like seeing the full square. But also, that's silly. Um, what I could do, let's do this. Uh, this is so, this is like the silliest thing I've ever done in my life, <laughs> that this is what I'm focusing on right now. How do you do this? Is that correct CSS? Yeah, that's what I, that's, I just wanted to do that. Okay. Right. How did it produce a square? Manthan asks everything that I'm, I'm asking right now in my head. How did it produce a square if the input wasn't a square? That's cool. Right? So I think the denoising should work now. All right. You would think, right? Can this model, let's do the following. Let's do an, a real input square and a real output. So um, 280 times 2, <laughs> 560, right? Uh, and then um, I'm going to do this. Create graphics or create image. Uh, 28 by 28. Um, Oh, no, no, I need to do create graphics. Oh, no, this is fine. I'm drawing it as square. I can, it's fine. I don't need to put it on a separate. Uh, background 255 now. Okay, so what I want to do now is have a filter invert 100%. What I want to do is have an input image and see the output image. So let's draw the output image um, on the other side. And now I want to see the input image on this side. So the input is, so this would be, this can be a function. A function render sum array, image array at some x and y. So this would be x, x plus that. And this is the image array. And the, the width and height, I've still got hard coded here in this like scale 10. That should be fixed at some point. But now what I should be able to do is render uh, output image at 280 comma 0. Still getting the same thing. I'm a, little, I'm a little bit suspicious of the fact that the square never changes its size. Oh, no. No, it's different. It's different each time, just very subtly so. OK. Now, there's no reason why I can't say render image 0, 0. 
oh, this is insane. So I could make this like, so I want to get to the browsing the latent space part. But weirdly, I could just turn this into like a pearl and noise field that's like subtly changing over time and see what happens to my output image. Like, I'm not even, like, the whole point of this is so I can get down to that reduced dimensionality, but I can actually play with this input because it's just 784 values. This is, this is so, I'm so excited by this, I can't, I mean, this is like the ba most basic of the basic of the basic, but I'm, uh, this is just like, mwah, really unlocking for me. Um, this, like, sometimes it just feels like total mad, and this feels, this even feels like magic, but it, when you see like these really sophisticated generative models, but really being able to, like all the pieces of everything going on here, we have coded and designed. Yes, the actual machine learning math is coming from the underlying TensorFlow.js, but how we're manipulating this, what data we use, have total control over. So um, what I would like to do now is I would like to put this into the draw loop. Let's just see what happens here. If I just put this async function draw, like what if I, how? Okay, nope. What did I mess up? Oh, the auto, no. Cannot read properties of undefined reading predict. Oh, this has to be a wait. No. What am I doing wrong here? Await output array render. As if, oh, no, now I didn't get an error. But I'm not seeing the, I think, the, I think asyncing draw is a real problem here. So let's not async draw. Let's let draw go. Oh, this is why I don't like doing this in the browser. It's got to be the fact that I'm asyncing draw, right? So what if I just do like my own loop? So let's call this input image. Oh, shoot. So this will be an async function. Pass this in. Return output image. This isn't really, no, because, all right, let's make these, glo this is a bad idea, but let's just make these global. Um, so this is, uh, And then when you get the next image, we make a new one. All right, hold on. What if I do this? Let's just, let's just initialize them. This is sort of, I don't, I don't like what I'm doing, but I just want to make sure it works. And then let's just, I'm just going to fill them randomly. And then this just renders both of them. OK. Oh, input image index i. I, I should see just two random images. Great. So I got two random images. Um, 
Yeah, that, what Chris is suggesting, you could have draw render whatever is latest finished, and your async function call itself recursively is what I'm going to do. There also is an array sync function, I think, where I can make that conversion to data. So Mike on the box is asking, why do I need await? So the, the, three, the thing with using TensorFlow.js is it's doing all the machine learning math on the GPU, and there is uh, comp there, I mean, I'm using so little data that this is so unnecessary, and I should send the back, set the back end to CPU. But you need to uh, have any time that you are taking the data out and turning it in and off of the GPU so that I can manipulate it in my code, that needs to be an asynchronous function. So this return is unnecessary. So what I'm going to do is call await next image. So let's just see if I can get one new image. No, image is not defined. Where am I still using image? Ah, here. OK, great. So I've got one. And now I should be able to just call next image. Now sometimes. This will lock up the browser if I don't like give this a little bit of like daylight here, like with a set timeout. But let's just see. Okay, great. No, no problem. So this is now working. I'm just always drawing the latest thing. So now, in the again, I want to make this a proper latent space, but I cannot resist <laughs> Perl noising this. So we're going to create X offs. No, I'm going to need to use, no, this will be Z off. And then the next image is X offset equals zero. No, let's do this properly. Let I equal zero, I is less than 28. I hate that I have this hard coded in here. I've got to fix that up. So we're going to have j is the y offset. Going to have an x offset. Now, you might be like, what are you even doing right now? So I would assume that, let's say, 2D Perlin noise. There we go. Thank you, Google, for referring to me. But um, so what I'm doing is I'm taking this concept of having two-dimensional Perlin noise, which you can learn more about in this video from five years ago. How long have I been at this? Oh my god. Um, and using that as a way of manipulating the input. I really should do the denoising. But I can't resist this. So you may not understand fully, but I'm going to say let value equal noise, x off, y off, z off. So every j, the y off should go up by some incrementation. No, stop autofilling things for me. The x off should also go up by some incrementation value. And then also, wait, I'm missing a curly bracket, right? Next image, curly bracket for, what did I do wrong here? I, J, oh, oh no, that's the end there. Oh, ah! what just happened? Ah, I forgot that this function has more to it. Okay, we're okay. There we go. And then Z off goes up by that incrementation as well. We're going to make it a slow increment. Let's try this for right now. And then the input image in uh, i plus j times 28 equals that value. All right, so let's see what happens here. 
Oh, we've got some weird extra imports again. Uh, syntax error in line 26. That should be an equals. <laughs> so here I am. I mean, yeah. So this, uh, the Z offset incrementation is kind of wildly too high. Oh, wait, no. What did I? Oh, no, that's X off. I guess I should have a different. Yeah. So this is this sort of like cloudy pearl and noise field that is changing. And slowly over time, we're seeing the late. So again, uh, I'm going to really need, oh, it's 11.54. I have to wrap up. Uh, this definitely needs, uh, <laughs> right? And Michael Kempt is pointing out a very good point, which is just because pearl and noise only moves slightly does not mean the output squares will follow. So I got a little sidetracked, whereas I really should just be working with just the decoder. But I think I can, I, and I've got to go, unfortunately, about five minutes, because let me just check. Um, OK, because my, um, I, I got to get back to my kids. <laughs> for her. I, I could give you all the details about that, but that's the, that's the summary. But, um, and that's why you're excited for the actual latent space, because it's more likely to be a smooth. But I think I can get something a little bit more exciting here. Um, so what I would like to do. Well, first, I would like to test the denoising. Ah, de that's going to send me, I really want to test the denoising. But the two things that I wanted, one would be testing the denoising. I'm pretty sure the denoising is going to work, though, because even just like random noise gives me a square. So you would think that random noise with a sort of darker high square embedded inside of it would really give me the square. But I think what might be more interesting is for me to have an output with much more variety. So should I stick? I also kind of am tempted to bump up the resolution. I think I'll stick with 28 by 28, though. And what I'm going to do is this is my data generation. So I am going to say, first of all, I want the size of the images to be have much more variety. So let's allow it to go all the way down to 25. Then let's also say if random is less, let's flip a coin and have it either be a square or a circle. Let's also, I mean, I think 500 images. Should I double the number of images just because um, just because now I'm doing squares and circles? Let's see. Let, so let's try this. So now my images are both squares and circles. I'd love to introduce triangles in there, but I think this will give us something more interesting just to start with. Because what I want to see with the latent space is the morphing between squares and circles. And I, I, unfortunately, the latent space is going to have to wait till next time. Although I am planning to live stream this coming Friday. I could do it tomorrow. Probably not, though. Tempted to come back tomorrow. We'll see. Um, so now, if I take this data, right, which should be squares and circles. So this is now the new training data. And... Let me just have, is the code loading directly from that? Now I'm going to go back to my training code. I could, um, I'm gonna, let's generate, whoops, ah! Let's put the training back in. Ah, sorry, everybody. What is going on? I'm so having trouble. I'm just going to manually do this. So I want to load now 1,100 images. I want to train, train the first 1,000, and then the rest will be the tests. Um, image loading. Where are the images being pulled from when I load all images? 
Uh, so I think I might like it to go directly into whatever processing has outputted most recently. Uh, by the way, I'm going to turn, since I'm wrapping up, I'm going to turn the heat off. All right. It's plenty warm in here, and I'm going to be wrapping up soon, so I've turned off the heat. Um, so I'm going to grab this. I'm sorry to be rushing a little bit here. Oh, and they're all called square. That doesn't matter. And there's a thousand of them. So, oops. No, but that's fine. The last one would be 999. Wait a sec. Like, I want to get rid of this. And what? Oh, I need four. I need, uh, no, no, it worked. No, but let me, so this should have a four here. Let me run that again. Oh, actually, ah, no, stop. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. Data is a thing. Okay. Delete all this. The chat has gone quiet again. So what I'm learning, by the way, is, which is totally fine, is the those of you who are here, mm, thank you. It's a small audience for this on Sunday morning. Uh, let's generate the data again. 1,100. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, so now... And then what I wanted to do is have, yeah, the images come from, oh, and I, this is so silly, but it's fine. I'm going to leave it as saying square. That I do need to change because they're not all squares, so I should probably use a more generic term. But oh, 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 and then now I should be able to put that in there. Is there another place where I'm numeral formatting things? I don't know what this is. This write, this is writing the output, but that's fine. Um, and so this should go to the actual data from processing. So let's see what happens. And then we want a thousand and then the 100 for the tests. Okay. So now I should be able to train the new model. Oops, line 21. Oh, I'm not loading anymore. Ooh, this is going to take a while for 100 epochs. There's a lot more data. Let's see how the lost goes. All right, so Q, who just joined, KYU, um, what I am doing is I have trained an autoencoder to, um, which is a machine learning model, to try to reproduce generic images of squares and circles. So right now I'm training that model, and once it's done, I'm going to load a web page which shows the results of what the model generates when random noise is fed into it. There's a lot more pieces to this that I'm sort of missing here, 6 p.m., yeah. Um, okay, we got to 100. Okay, so now, so first of all, we have, a little, we have some test things that I generated just to see. So the output folder should now have new, oh, um, I have to look at the noon ones. Yeah, it's like a circle square, squircle, is that the term? Okay, great. So we're seeing stuff. So now, in theory, if I refresh this page, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, this is so cool. You can see this sort of like, it's like a latent space browsing, but I'm not really doing that yet. Now, could I expand the universe of the inputs? Like, Perlin noise is very sort of like limited around the, like, I'm just curious. No, uh, so this is where I'm going to wrap up today. I'm very happy with this result, even though clearly I need a part four. I need a part four. Um, I would love to, like, just swap in open simplex noise. 
But one thing I can do very quickly is I can do two times, I mean, I shouldn't do this. But, like I'm feeding in like weird negative numbers and stuff that it doesn't know about. So just to sort of see. This is wild. Um, all right, let, let me just go back to a not doing this weird thing that I just did here. So, uh, all right. Oh, 12, four. Okay, okay, just give me like five more minutes because I just want to see, like I want to have a sense of, <coughs> am I capable of doing this at uh, tw double the resolution right now? So now, unfortunately, I've hard-coded everything. So let's just look for a second in, it's like what if I were to, uh, I don't know about this. Oh yeah, resize everything to, oh, so let me just do a little cleanup here. Just to leave this, because I want to leave this in a place where people can play with it. So I'm going to delete all the output. I'm going to, <coughs> well, the model can stay there. I'm going to delete the training data. I want to just go through and then, um, so let's do 28 times 2, which is 56. <laughs> 20, 20 plus 20 is 40, 8 plus 8 is 16, 56. So let's just try it double. Um, so that's the, so I'm going to make this training data. It's going to be a little bit higher resolution. Then when I go into the uh, auto encoder, um, do I have it hard coded anywhere? Like 700? Yes. So now that is that the only place where that's hard coded? There's two places. And then is 28 anywhere? No. Okay. So I need in this. Oh, here it is. So um, I need to have a um, constant w equals 56. And so this should be w times w. This should be w times w. And then this should be w times w. Is there any 28 anywhere? W, this is w. This is w. That's just 128. And is there any 784 hard-coded anywhere? No. Then I should be able to go back to the sketch and also have, I'm not really, this. So this should be uh, W times W. And this is W times W. This is W. This is W. W, this is, all right, so this I have to think about now. So then I also have like little w, which equals, I'm just going to say height divided by the big w, because then that is w times w. Right? It's how far over. This is W, W, and then this is little w, little w, little w. I think I did this correct. So now all I need to do is, like, if I want to use a higher resolution image, this is like whatever that is. I have to, just have to change it in two places. Here, well, three places. The processing sketch, the P5 sketch, and the node server. So I did it already here. I didn't actually make it a variable here. <laughs> Just to be consistent, let's do that. Again, there's, there would be, you know, tying all these together would be better. But now I should be able to train the model. It's going to take much longer now. I don't know how long. Like that's one epoch. So one epoch was a few seconds there. So this is going to take a while. Line 49. Um, so, I don't know what line 49 was referring to. 
Um, I think I got it already, I'm assuming. If it was in here. If it was in here. Ah, oh, thank you. Missed one. Thank you for that. Yeah, those variable names. Ouch. Yeah, this is terrible. So pull requests that I'm looking for are cleaning up the variable names. Love that. Making a nice README that sort of explains everything and links to these live streams. <laughs> I would love pull request contributions for that. I mean, uh, in January, I'll get to it myself. Um, but I'm at Epoch 31. Oh boy, this is going to take a while. But this is... This is, um, this is going to be the end for today. I, I did not, the things that I didn't get to is just lopping off the input. So the, two, the, three, the things that I wanted to try, and this could go into the readme if anyone wants to, oh, who's keeping notes on any of this? Nobody. My mental notes are, I want to see if the denoising works. And then, t uh, then I want to uh, also actually work with the proper latent space by feeding the input, like I just have eight dimensions and creating sliders to manipulate those. Um, that's next on the agenda. Um, and, you know, then also trying training, like RGB color could I do? How high of a resolution can I push it? We can see how long this is taking already just for um, 100 epochs, but I'm, I'm halfway through. I don't know, this probably doesn't need to train much longer. The loss is still going down. Um, thank you for all these chat messages. Is, uh, um, is my Discord even working? There's nobody, nobody putting messages into the Discord, but um, I've got a supporter channel in Discord that I keep open during the live streams. Okay, we're at 80, we're getting there. This could use some music, right? 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, yeah, we're getting there, 95, 96, 97, 98, 100. Hey, the loss is still going down. I could let it train longer. Okay, so now, I mean, in theory, I should just refresh this page and it'll be working at the higher resolution with the new model because everything's pulling from the same directories. But how is that, how is that possibly going to be true? Okay. Yeah, working. This is wild. Right, let's move the, let's move, the, oh, this is so, let's have the numbers move faster. So, actually, let's just do this. Let's change the incrementation just globally here. There we go. So, I am, it seems to be just kind of oscillating between a small circle and a big circle. Um, but I think I really need to play, oh, there we're getting like a square, but the Perlin noise space is not giving me a tremendous amount of variety, actually. Um, oh, yeah, look at that. Whoa, that's cool. This is like, this is amazing. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm living like way in the past in terms of like where the this, this current state of machine learning generative models is today, but I don't know. I just, I'm just in love with this weird sort of thing that I've made. But um, I, uh, um, I, I want to make this go even faster. I'm just curious to like, let's, let's keep pushing this speed of change here. Yeah, what's interesting is how it goes from like small to big through a fade as opposed to actually like having to grow. But, and then every once in a while it like turns into a square shape. Um, but anyway, yeah, where are the squares? I'm, I'm with you, Mikhail. Mikhail, where are the squares? Um, you know, one thing that I would do here, just out of curiosity, is to change 
from Perl and noise to just randomness again, um, and sort of see what that gives us. Ooh, whoops. Oh, I'm missing the w times w. It really does seem to be that it's so much more heavily circle making. And it's kind of like it's going, but I, this isn't a proper test because, and I'm go, going to go back, this isn't a proper test because I'm not actually working with this in a logical way. <laughs> the two things I should be doing are number one, if I am actually wanting to see what it does with full in, the full input image, I should be drawing strange shapes over here and seeing how they match up. Then I should be actually controlling the latent variables with sliders because I bet you we could find the circle to square vec this dimension. So this is what, unfortunately, I mean, two hours and 15 minutes is, is all I can do for today. So part four is coming on Friday, where I want to uh, examine um, actually putting in some input images to see if denoising, like let's make also some triangles, let's make this more sophisticated, maybe RGB color could even be added. Um, and then working with only the decoder and creating sliders to allow me to manipulate since you have more input variety, you should train longer to recover the shapes properly. Yeah, I also just needed to train this model longer, but the initial results are amazing. Thank you. So before I go any further, um, well, before I wrap up, so what have I changed? There's now the public directory that has the model in it and the, the P5 sketch. I've updated the, um, the node server to train a new model each time. And uh, the, P the processing sketch, um, yes, hand-drawn circle as an input. The output would be a perfect circle. Oh, from Perl and Noise. Oh, these are such good ideas. File them as issues. I mean, or pull request to read me. But if these ideas, I love these ideas. I will not remember them. <laughs> um, so the Perl and Noise generate landscapes is a really interesting idea. The um, drawing and then seeing, um, seeing if we could make a machine learning model take your squiggly circle that you draw and make it a perfect circle. I love all these ideas. Um, so um, yes, let's do all that. Add them as issues into the GitHub repo. Um, so let me just do git. I did that already. Git add, git commit new. Uh, this is like code for P5 sketch and training uh, and saving slash loading model. That's really what I did today. Uh, git push origin main. And you can see that model is, you can actually work just with the P5.js sketch now because um, the model files I are, am committing to the repository. So uh, if I go here, autoencoder demo. It's very painful to me that there's no README here. <laughs> but um, this is just the P5.js sketch. This is the model that I trained most recently. I'm just curious, how big is this file? 6.4 megabytes, very reasonable. Um, so everyone can play with this to their heart's content. Uh, those ideas that you have of things I could try next, please file them as um, issues. Mini Jimmy looks like. So if you are taking your own, if you're making your own version of this, um, and you add things like colors and do like real expansive of the feature set, don't pull request that, but either file an issue or pull request a link in a readme to your version with um, sample images. But what I would love pull requests are documentation of what I have so far, um, any like small, any, any like real bugs or like significant mistakes that are in the code or small cleanup things where like the variable names are changed to be a little bit better, I would welcome that. But anything that's really significantly changing what I have so far, I can't merge because I want to have a record of everything in the live streams. But you can, I can link to it and review it and incorporate those ideas. Okay, thank you everybody. Uh, thank you to Brilliant for being the sponsor of today's live stream. Check out Brilliant at brilliant.org slash coding train. Um, and uh, I will see you all. Um, whoops.
maybe on, fr uh, well, definitely, well, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully on Friday, I'm going to continue this. I feel like just leaving this here. Um, I wanted to produce some squares. No, you don't see this. This is like, uh, I was going to, like, usually, I'm just going to leave this here <laughs> as I play all the outro music and see you on uh, the, next, the next live stream. Oh, this autoencoder project has really been uh, fascinating to do. I have to think about what, I have to think about what to do with this next. Like, I could make proper video tutorials of coding the whole thing that are edited through. I could make one video that summarizes it. I would love your feedback on that. Like you're maybe the wrong person to be asking because you're watching this right now. But a lot of you just are probably tuned in the last 15 minutes. <laughs> so what would you want if you weren't able to tune into all of the live streams or if you wanted to go back and review parts of the live streams, what would you want as uh, something that comes out of this as a video? I don't know. Uh, I'm going to be working on that in January. Okay, um, see you all. Um, do I have just the laptop button? No, oh, I don't have a button for that here. Does this work? Yeah, all right, so I've removed myself. I'm muting myself, and, and I will see you all next time on the coding train. Um, As always, I always forget the this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this, this dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do dot, this dot, this dot. 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 This dot, this dot.
no idea. I'm realizing something. So while I'm playing that music, I'm realizing that if I had the latent variables like tied to like frequency levels in the music or something, then this output would go along with the music. So as like the beat goes, the circles would like change as the music slow, you know, like quiets down, it would become more static. This is also something for me to try for any of you who are adding issues to the repo for things for me to remember next time. Having the latent variables tied to input sound would be an awesome thing to do. Hey, keys. That was the invalid syntax, I forgot. Uh, there was one other thing here that I think is important that I will use continuously over and over again. All sorts of text generation analysis things that I will use continuously over and over again. First thing I need to do is, yes, kittens, kittens, kittens. I'm really losing my mind. Okay, we're gonna do it. Kittens and kittens and kittens and kittens, 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 kittens and 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 kittens and